Oh, I'm back. <laughs> um, I thought I'd do another quick video for you guys today. Um, not on 3D Vista. Uh, some of you might be pleased to hear. <laughs> what I wanted to do today is because I've seen quite a few posts on various Facebook groups, and this is how I normally sort of come to do these videos. Um, and that has been about how to remove tripods um, in 360 images, which should really be quite an easy thing to do. Um, some people are using Photoshop, some people are using sort of third party plugins, like apps and things like that, if they're doing their editing on their phones. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to touch on using Affinity Photo, um, which is, I've been using for some time now, uh, and it's an absolutely incredible software. Very, very easy to use, very easy to remove um, the tripod, first of all, but there are some other features in there that I find uh, absolutely fantastic. And so, you know, I'm not being paid by Affinity, uh, um, you know, I just, I just really, really enjoy using it. So I thought I'd pass that on to you guys. So, um, so yeah, let's have a quick look on the computer and I'll show you through how it all works. Cool. Okay, guys and girls. So here we go. Uh, this is the main screen of Affinity Photo. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick video, to be honest. Um, I mean, I could probably go on for ages, you know, doing tiny bits and pieces, but uh, but I just really want to show you uh, the difference between using Affinity as opposed to using Photoshop. Um, I used to use Photoshop to remove tripods and things like that, but the problem I found is that you have to open up a different workspace and uh, work with layers and all this sort of stuff, and it just took absolutely ages, and it also massively slowed down my computer. Um, so uh, let's get cracking. Um, first of all, what you want to do is come over to File. Um, obviously, you can import it directly from um, your desktop if you want just by right clicking and then choosing open with affinity um, but we'll just uh, do a open and then find the video uh, sorry an image here there we are okay um, so we've got our image imported and um, now what you need to do is come up to layer go to live projection and then accurate angular projection there we go easy as that, just turns it straight into a 360 view. So you can look around your image, and then if we look down, there's our tripod. Um, now I've chosen a slightly tricky one here, um, <laughs> which I didn't just realize, because we've got the shadows of the tripod, but that's not a problem at all, we can get that fixed. So up here, you've got a field of view slider, so you can change your uh, field of view. I normally just zoom it straight out, which gives me you know, quite a lot of floor space to work with. Now there's two options you've got, um, main ones um, to remove the tripod. Uh, if you come onto the left menu here and right click, you've got healing brush, patch tool, blemish removal, in painting brush, and red eye. Um, first one, the in painting brush tool, is pretty clever, and that's the one I do use most of the time. Um, so we'll give this one a go first. Um, just press the bracket keys just to increase the size of the brush, and then let's get brushing. So if we brush over this tripod, like so. Okay, fill that middle bit in, let go. Hopefully, it's not going to do too bad a job and embarrass me. <laughs> there we go, that's fine. Yeah, see, that's done a really, really good job straight away. So, um, to get rid of these other bits here, you can use the same tool if you want to. Um, so, we'll try and get rid of this lot with the in-painting brush as well. There's a little yellow bit here that I'd quite like to get rid of as well, but I'll do that in a minute. There we go, gone, and then that's going to be the camera here. There we go. Um, and I'll get rid of this one using the same tool as well. It's just a rough and dirty job I'm doing here just to give you an idea of how it works. You can put as much or as little effort into this as you want. Obviously you want to make it look, look good. Um, but as I said before, I wouldn't spend hours and hours and hours and hours making this look absolutely perfect. Um, so then the other, the other tool here is the patch tool. So what you can do from here is just draw over the area that you would like to change and then you can move your mouse and sample from a different area. So you can see here that's sampling into there. So the shadow looks sort of matched up here. Click, click again, gone. Okay. And there's a little yellow patch here we could get rid of. Don't go over the top, Nick. There we go. Okay. And to get back, 
we can go to live projection, edit live projection, and there we go, it's gone. So let's put us back into our 360 view. Um, from here, you can do tons of other things as well. There's a couple of things that I will show you that I think that I think is pretty good. Um, first one is the 3D text tool. Um, some people have actually messaged me to ask me how I put text on my images, whether I use 3D Vista or not. Um, no, I use this. So we click on the artistic text tool in the bottom left here, or sorry, on the left, and then we draw a little box where we want our text and say, um, let's just say church, like so, and then double click, we can change our font, like so, and then we'll choose the move tool and move this into the middle here. Then what you want to do is come on to filters, distort, and then perspective. And what this enables us to do is just change the perspective of this text so it looks like it's on the wall here like that. That's pretty much okay. I'm terrible with this. I tend to spend hours and hours looking at this to make it look perfect. Um, so I'm not going to take up all your time and bore, bore you. Apply. There we go. Done. So that's now in there. Now the thing with this is that this is a destructive workflow doing this. So why I always, because what you need to do is you need to right click this and then click merge down. That basically merges it into this image. So what's very important to do, if we now click on layer, live projection, remove projection, this will take us out of the 360 view and back into the flat acre rectangular view. Okay, so we can see the text is on here. Now, if you were to go cross save, that would overwrite this image, okay? So what I always recommend people do is go to file, export, and then you can export the image as any of these file types, obviously you're most likely gonna do a JPEG. Um, and then you just click on export and, um, and choose your location of where you want it to go. Um, that is pretty much it. Uh, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And um, yeah, easy as that. So I hope you guys found that useful. And as I say, I've, I've been using Affinity for some time now, so uh, I don't think I'd really ever use anything else. Yes, of course, you can take an idea shot separately. So for the, you guys in the, that you get to put that in the comments, feel free to. But, uh, but personally, I choose not to use that method uh, unless there is a very, very, very complicated floor pattern. Uh, which can cause problems, you know, with patching and things like that. But let's be honest, how many people are going to look at the floor of a 360 image, your average user, and go, oh, God, they didn't stitch it properly. You know, not, not many at all. So as long as it looks neat, looks tidy, then I think we're, we're all good. So, so, yeah, you know, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you hasn't, haven't subscribed already, then please do. Uh, just click the subscribe button and the bell icon. Really appreciate it. And give the video a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, I hope to be doing some more videos for you soon. Cool. Take care, guys.